Please join me in welcoming to the stage Manal Beg and Geraldine Viswanathan. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you all so much for staying. Um, I wanted to begin with a question about the coming of age genre, which I think you capture so beautifully. And something that I love about the film is the inclusion of the parents. Because I think that's a big part of growing up is realizing your parents are more than just parents. Can you talk about that in the writing process and, and wanting to include that as part of Halda's journey? Yeah, it was, um, so there's a, you know, we started there was a feature script that we then that I made a short film off of, and it was focused on this subplot, um, this relationship that Hala had with Jesse. And what was really fascinating was that the conflict between the parents and Hala was the background of that short film. And what was amazing was the response to the short was like overwhelmingly like, we want to we want to see more of that family dynamic. And then once I had that, it was rewriting the script to foreground the parents because that was like the less familiar part of the story that I think, you know, was kind of unexpectedly, ex unexpectedly drew the interest of like people watching it. They were like, oh, that, that I haven't seen before, like want more of that. Um, so then revising the script, it was like more of this, you know, exploring this relationship that Hala has with her mother and her father um, and that romantic relationship remains, but it's it's more of like the inciting incident and uh, subplot, but I think the real love story is between Hala and her mother. Yeah, that's a beautiful way of putting it. Um, I remember on Twitter you talked a lot about casting and challenges around casting, and I'm wondering if you could talk about how you found your incredible lead. <laughs> Oh my God, I don't remember what I said, but I hope it was oh, good. It was just, it was a, great. It was, I hope it was, it was a great. long process. And you were, yeah, very, yeah, no, yeah. yeah, it that, was just, I, yeah. I have, I think that. Do you want me to pull up the tweets? I'm no. <laughs> you have, you have the receipts, actually. Um, no, the, the, pro, like, when I was writing her, you know, on paper, she's a very self serious teenager. And it was always going to be really challenging to find someone who could, like, visualize a very internal conflict. And when Geraldine's tape came in, I wasn't, you know, I hadn't seen Blockers at that time because it was still being edited when we were casting the film. So, but I had heard all these amazing things about her. Um, and I knew that she had come from this comedic background and had done comedic roles. But this was like kind of going to be something in, the, in a different direction. But when she submitted that tape, it was immediately clear that like not only did she have all, project all that emotional depth um, in, with, in, in, you know, even in places where it was like, completely nonverbal, but also was like bringing this unanticipated lightness and levity to Hala, which was like the piece that was missing. Um, and uh, I think that's very obvious from like who Geraldine is a person, but also like I think she found a way to bring that to Hala um, because we want her to be someone, you know, who has multiple, you know, is multifaceted. Mm -hmm. Like all humans. With yes, yeah, exactly. humans with a H. No. Lower, lowercase h. <laughs> <laughs> Containing multitudes. Um, Geraldine, congrats again on being part of the TIFF Rising Star Thank program. You. We're so happy that Thanks. you're part of it. Yeah. Thank and I guys. think you can all now see why. <laughs> So nice. Um, I wanted to just ask you about, you know, as, as Manal was saying, you're coming from a comedic background. Mm -hmm. What was it like to step into this role? It was, it was incredible. I mean, it was uh, daunting. At first, of course, um, I had just before we started shooting this, I had just done a very silly Netflix comedy. <laughs> so it was a real switch, um, but in a good way. And I think there was no other way to just like than to just delve into it and give it a g give it a shot. And um, it was just, you know, I was lucky Minhal. Um, we just were a partnership and we really um, just felt so strongly about this. And it was such a treat and I feel like I learned so much in the process yeah did you learn how to skateboard <laughs> she actually submitted a tape to prove she could skateboard uh, I and got my film to <laughs> yeah my friend it was film made kind of funny <laughs> because we were getting tapes of, of young women to, who were saying they could skateboard and it was like oh my god but your tape was amazing <laughs> It was great skateboard. It was me just skating along a down street, a street, <laughs> down a street, standing, like, being like, people. "Look, I That's didn't cool. fall." <laughs> um, <laughs> but I—that's I all we needed. Guys. Yeah, I did a few skate lessons, but 
Uh, well, I would like to turn it over to the audience if there are any questions. Just ask that you raise your hand nice and high, and I will also repeat the question for the benefit of people who might not have heard. Yes, right here in the front. How is it like writing the script? Um, like, were you writing in English first and then working backwards, or were you writing like the dialogue in Urdu, like, well, and before when you were writing? So the question is in regards to the writing process yeah. and whether it was in English and Urdu or going back and yeah. forth. So the whole script was written in English first, but I knew that the parents were going to speak in Urdu, so we, I went into the script and like went did a pass and it was mostly Aram's dialogue that had it to change into Urdu so we did that and then when we cast uh Perby and Azad um as Aram and Zahid they came together and we did like we did a table read in English and then we also did rehearsals where they would read the Urdu and it was like a very evolving process because some of the Urdu that was written was like very formal and so we had to make it just more casual and that was where Purvi and Azad's contributions were like invaluable because they really wanted it to feel like they knew each other and they wouldn't use such a high level language uh, with each other. Um, so then as their input came into the rehearsal process, I was revising the script and making those changes. And then on the day, we would also, there were a couple of times where like something felt like uh, not quite right, the not quite the way, like it would, we would need like the slang for it or something that was just like a shortcut. Um, so then we would talk it out on on the day and then to make those changes. We also had this incredible onset translator. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, right, remember him? Yes. Yeah, he was sitting there and I was really nervous because he's like a scholar and he would sit next to me on the monitor and I would be like, oh my God, is this like, right? <laughs> um, because like my Urdu is also like, you know, it's TK, like it's not amazing. Uh, and I'm like, so he's, he's a scholar and he knows like Urdu really, really well. So the whole time I was just like, <laughs> like is it and then he was like no it's good it's great and then we would we, he was also there to help on set with uh people who were not as uh proficient to sort of especially in the dinner scene like helping the other actors like with like just pronunciation and making sure they got it in the way that it was meant to be said um but it also meant that we could, didn't have very much room for improvisation in that piece of it the early dialogue because it was you know we had to rewrite those and make sure that all the actors knew what was being said. And then Geraldine is also acting opposite a language she doesn't understand. Um, so we had to have a very extensive rehearsal process so that she's responding very organically in the scene to what is being said uh, because they've rehearsed so much. It's not off of cues or like me saying like, this is now where you're sad. Mm. Um, it was a very, it's in real time, like she's, you know, responding to it. So it all was like, a long process of making sure we had an Urdu version of the script. Um, it, I used dual dialogue in Final Draft, if anyone cares. Um, <laughs> it's great. Geraldine, can you talk a bit about that experience? Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, never had to do that before. I, it was, it was uh, such an interesting exercise, though, because I, one, you realize how important body language is and how much is yeah. non-verbal, kind of. And um, also, it was just, it was really fun kind of, it, it meant that I had to sort of know their lines and what they were saying and, and, and so yeah, it was, uh, it was really interesting and I kind of picked up some words. Yeah, you got pretty good at the end. You, yeah. had, you said some stuff and like the onset translator was like impressed. He's like, she's really good for <laughs> not knowing the language. I was like, yeah, I know. It was, Pronunciation it was is great. immersive, yeah. Yeah, right here. Yeah. The sort of music of virginity in the short is more a moment of empowerment or fear that empowerment is almost taken away. But I just want to know when you were creating this feature that yeah. did you want to go back to the original material or were you trying to incorporate the original There were a lot so of just in case folks didn't oh hear yeah. the question was in regards to transitioning between the sh the short and feature and in revisiting that material, did you want to build or build one or maybe get closer to it and because there were some key differences between right. the two. Um, there were a lot of lessons from the short. Um, I think part of it was like the focus and the foregrounding of the parents. Um, I also wanted it to be more 
like true to the experience of like first time and that it's not what she expects that it will be. And it's not like she doesn't have any agency she chooses to and it's obviously like she's enjoying it for part of it but it's also like kind of a letdown because it's never as good as what you think it will be <laughs> um and that's just real life um so i like wanted that to be reflected in the movie yes it's all the women are like yes um so that was definitely a big change and then for jesse's character it was like i just realized that I wanted him to have a similar interest to Hala, and Hala was going to be like someone who had a real love for language and words and poetry, and I wanted that connection to be like almost intellectual um, and very self-serious uh, that they're sharing poetry, and I liked that better than him doing something kind of different, um, and so that sort of was that change in his character, um, and there were lots of other things too. Like I feel like the visual language of the short was very, you know, much more handheld and like kind of real timey. And I think the feature was like more restrained because of the psychology of this character. And I was starting to get a better sense of who she was and that so much was about what was unsaid and the camera had to be quieter and still and let us live in that much more than sort of jerking us around so much. Um, so the vi visual language changed a lot too. And there's a couple moments in the film where we do more of the handheld thing, but it was very key emotional moments where like, oh, this is a pretty, this is a strong departure. And we were very deliberate in that. Um, so there were a lot of changes. It was very informative. I think if I hadn't done that, I think that probably the feature would have been very different. It's all the way in the back. Yeah, you, yeah. Oh, sorry, it, very, very back. <laughs> and then we'll go to that back. Yeah. But yeah. So the question is in regards to the cre creative decision in terms of Hala removing her hijab at the end. That's a really good question. You know, when I was writing the script, um, it wasn't necessarily something that I knew was going to happen for the longest time. Um, it wasn't very premeditated. It was. I wanted it to feel honest to the character. I think that she's gone through a lot. And I think at that age, when you're 17, 16, 17 years old, and she's going through as much as she is, there is a natural conflation between culture and faith that's happening um, for her. And I think that the movie is operating in different layers. Like some of this is definitely just cultural, like her being at the dinner with the other family is like a cultural thing. Um, but for her, it's sort of, starting to be compressed and feel like the same thing. And in a way, for our, for me, it was important that the, real, the journey that she's going, undergoing as part of her faith, in the beginning of the movie, she is in a place of like, kind of going through the motions because she's, that's sort of what's expected of her and she's been doing it and it's more of a habitual thing. It's not so much an active choice with regards to her faith, not necessarily the hijab. Um, so when she's skipping prayers in the morning, it's like, it felt like she's sort of, you know, doing it because it's something she's done. And then at the end when she is praying and she's uh, away at school, it was important for me to sort of make that same connection and kind of revisit that because she's making an active choice now um, and no one's telling her to pray. And that is like just a small piece of her, you know, journey. I wanted it to be very much that she is taking parts of her culture and she's continuing to practice her faith, but not necessarily wearing the hijab because that doesn't fit at that moment in time, that day that when she steps out um, with how she's feeling about it. Um, and also I think that at the end of the movie, she's not figured everything out. <laughs> it will take a long time for her to figure it out. And uh, it's just f pretty uh, representative of the experience of a lot of young women. Um, for me in my life, uh, where you kind of like boomerang, like where part of your life in your teens is about assimilation and sort of fitting in. And then you get older and you kind of go back uh, to your faith and your culture. And in this point in the movie, she's 17 and isn't quite there yet. I'm the person in the middle that I... Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes, here on the aisle.
So the question is, when you thought of Hala's story, did you always conceive of it as a feature, or did you ever think miniseries? Or it was always a feature in my head, because I, I kind of saw the arc of what would happen. It like I knew that she was going to go away to school, and that's kind of where we would leave her, um, and that felt like a very contained story and made sense for a movie, a, ni a ninety-minute movie. Um, uh, and yeah, I think that I, what I like is that we leave her in a place where you can kind of imagine that there was a whole chapter ahead of her, but we're just like not going to see that in this movie. And you can kind of like fill in what you think happened uh, next. Yes, right here in the red shirt. Sure. So the question is in regards to Hala's encounter with the teacher and the right. significance of, of that moment. <sighs> Teenagers are weird, man. <laughs> like, adolescence is a hell of a drug. Man. <laughs> like, seriously, I think that people, like, she's 17 years old. She thinks the teacher gives her a little bit of attention and she takes it very seriously because she's a romantic and she reads poetry <laughs> and takes her life very, very seriously. And it makes sense to me that she's like drawn to this teacher who's giving her a little bit of, you know, attention and care and he obviously is looking out for her, but in the way that a teacher should. And then she sort of oversteps a little bit um, as teenagers can do sometimes. Um, I also think she's somebody who's just, because she comes from a little bit of a more cu culturally conservative background, um, I do think that there's like this element where she's still trying to figure out herself sexually and like what that means and what is that power. And I, I don't quite think she understands that, w that she's crossing a line that it will have very serious consequences or that he will be the collateral damage of that choice. I think she's 17 and isn't thinking much further than tomorrow. So the question is in regards to the uh, broader representation right. of Pakistani immigration. American, yeah, 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 and and, and um. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I heard it. Um, no, I think like I put a lot of thought into the script. I really tried to put as much lived experience into it as possible, and the experiences of the people I grew up with, and I think when in the making of it, it was like very. Uh, it's very clear to me like in the making of the movie that Hala is fictional, what she's going through is fictional, it's a story, a lot of things are dramatized. But more importantly, like Hala doesn't represent every single Pakistani family, like Muslims are not a monolith. Um, I don't think I should have to speak for all Muslims or all Pakistani Americans, because I do think that, um, you know, this is Hala's specific story and the details of it have been filled in so much for my own life. Um, I try not to think so much about, you know, how, Muslim Americans and Pakistani Americans have been represented by people who don't come from those communities when I was making the movie because it was just honest to me. Um, and in the writing of it, I was very careful to take great measures to make sure that these people were multifaceted. Like, obviously the father is not completely evil and, you know, Aram is someone who is undergoing her own uh, coming of age and she's starting to define herself in a way outside of, uh, you know, as a mother and a wife. Um, I don't think she's disempowered. I think she's made a great, great big change at the end of the movie, and uh, I leave her in a place where you want to wish her well, um, in the same way with Hala. And you want, and you know, you don't get the tidy resolution with her and her father, but I think that they'll be okay. Um, and I think that the specificity of this family is that they're, you know, a little bit westernized in some ways, and then in other ways they're not. Um, I try to just make them, you know, the guiding North Star for this film has always been in every scene and, and I, in the writing of it, whether it felt emotionally true. Um, I don't know if that answers your question, but I tried to. Thank you. And um, we do have time for about one more question. Yeah, right here. Sorry, you touched about this um, just a moment ago about the relationship with the father, but in the last scene, that was seen with Paula, and him giving her the crossword, which was sort of Uh, 
I'm glad that you're interested. <laughs> so the question was how, how you see Hala's relationship with her father down, down the road. Well, I think the reality of it is like she's not in a place yet to forgive him. Um, I think there's a lot of healing that needs to be needs to happen. But I also think Hall is recognizing that like these relationships formed purely out of like intellectual, you know, attraction as proven by Jesse and and in her fought like in the relationship, the foundation of her relationship with her father, they're not always they're like you revisit that and you think about whether that's like truly what it is. Um, in the case of her dad, I think it was just like something she did with him and shared with him and it was an important part of her life, but she's growing and changing and starting and you know, her father who was once on this pedestal is no longer on that. Um, and she needs to see him as a more complex human being. Um, and I imagine, I mean, I would like to imagine that they end up in a good place eventually, but I think in the confines of this movie, it, d it really didn't make sense for her to forgive him so easily. I think it's a great testament to the film that you know we're wondering about what happens down the road to her. So thank you so much for sharing this film with us. Please, another big round of applause for Hala. Thank you so much.